Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is a follow-up video on my latest custom build PC project called the Rec Rig, designed for aspiring YouTube gamers, Let's Players, and Twitch streamers. Based around an affordable but current generation hardware like the Ryzen 3 1200 and GTX 1050 at its heart, which do the heavy lifting. But the advice here will be relevant regardless of the hardware you're using for your recording or your streaming. One of the most influential settings when it comes to squeezing out the best performance and video quality for live streaming or local recording, or indeed both at the same time, is whether or not you set up your capture software to utilize software-based video encoding, which places the load on the CPU, or GPU-based encoding, which in this rig's case uses the hardware-based NVENC encoding built into NVIDIA's GPUs. AMD cards also have an encoder on board, but at least with OBS you'll also need to install a small plugin to actually utilize it. On the CPU versus GPU front, there's a lot of bad advice out there about this issue, actually. Lots of wannabe know-it-alls on forums parroting something they read somewhere else, which in turn was regurgitated from somewhere else, and, and a lot of people just seem to take it on face value and repeat it. So I'm not just going to tell you what I think is best, I'm going to show you what the deal is. You can see for yourself the difference. CPU versus GPU and which one is best actually depends on what you're doing and why. There is actually no one-size-fits-all, simple, universal answer. The simplified, it depends answer, unravels like this. If you're live streaming, and it doesn't matter if it's Twitch or YouTube or Facebook or whatever, chances are you're doing so at a comparatively low bitrate. That is, how much data you're encoding and sending out over the upload side of your internet connection. I'm going to have another video about bitrates and how the balance works between how much data you're sending up or able to send up versus the resolutions and frame rates you're streaming at and how it affects your visual quality. But for the purposes of the demonstrations in this video I'm using here, I'm using the most computationally challenging option of a 1080p stream at 30 and 60 frames per second. And I'm using a 5550 kilobits per second bitrate, which is a little below the maximum allowable bitrate Twitch accepts, and it's what I personally stream at. But whatever the case, even at 1080p, 60 frames per second, at the kinds of maximum bit rates that streaming services like Twitch will accept, for the best quality, cleanest looking stream, you'll want to be using CPU encoding. While the GPU encoding is far more efficient and easier on your system resources, as you can clearly see here when we put some system resource graphs side by side, one of which is CPU encoding, one of which is GPU encoding, at the low bit rates we need for streaming, the GPU encoding results in a muddier looking video. There's more compression artifacting, more detail loss. The video generated at exactly the same bit rate, at exactly the same resolution, at exactly the same frame rates, just looks worse when you're using the GPU encoding. So, if you can, for streams, I highly recommend you use the CPU encoding option. It'll be cleaner and better looking. But using the CPU encoding is not always a practical option though. Sometimes, especially when you're asking the same PC you're streaming from to also run a demanding game, sometimes it's best to just take the hit on the loss of quality and go for the GPU encoder. That way your game can have more CPU time and your streaming software doesn't have to share it. Because doing so can severely harm both your in-game performance and cause stuttering and frame rate drops in your stream. This is especially important to keep in mind on the lower end CPUs like the Ryzen 3 in this particular rig. Builds with much more powerful higher end CPUs will have enough room for video encoding and the game without much worry. So experiment and see what works best for you on your machine. You can test this by setting OBS to record locally using the stream encoder. That way when you re-watch the video you just recorded you can see exactly what your viewers see so you can do all your testing without having to actually go live on Twitch or whatever and with a bunch of annoying little test streams. When you're dealing with locally recorded video for later editing and upload, not streaming, you'll be able to and should use a much higher bitrate for pristine video recording quality. For 1080p gameplay, recording at 60 frames per second, I'd recommend between 30 and 50 megabits per second bitrate. Going higher doesn't really get you much more quality benefit, but it will eat up your hard drive much faster and put much more load on your system to encode it in the first place. For 1440p or even 4K recordings, you'll stretch between 70 to 130 megabits per second. Again, we'll break things like bitrates down in a little more detail in another video coming soon. For now, we'll focus on 1080p, as it's by far the most common and useful for making highlight montages and Let's Play videos and the like. And when you're dealing with local recordings at these higher quality bitrates, the tables flip. 
Now, it becomes much more advantageous to use the GPU hardware encoding option. It is much more optimized for these higher bit rates. Meanwhile, if you ask the CPU to do exactly the same job at these bit rates, you'll get pretty much the same visual quality. However, the CPU will need to work much harder, which means you'll have less overhead for other tasks, and the CPU will run hotter, which will potentially make the fans spin faster, which will potentially cause you issues when it comes to noise if you're also recording live commentary into a microphone. It's interesting to note at this point, by the way, that I use the NVIDIA GeForce Share screen recording option to record all the footage you're seeing of the desktop in action here. And that's while it's simultaneously working on the OBS recordings that you're seeing. So that should give you a pretty good idea about just how efficient the GPU hardware encoding is. It right now is churning away on the OBS recording and the desktop recording at the same time, and it's still barely working up a sweat. The GPU encoding hardware is an extremely powerful option. Its only real Achilles heel, as I showed you a moment ago, is that it's just not super good at doing the low bitrate stuff suitable for streaming. So there you are, CPU versus GPU, broken down in hopefully a simple to understand manner. And the choice you need to make between the two simply depends on the task you're asking of it. Right tool for the right job at the right time, right? And this advice holds true regardless of whether or not using OBS or your capture card's own native software or NVIDIA's or AMD's native screen recording functions. So hopefully everything's all nice and demystified for you now. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful or at least interesting. I am Lottie and I will catch you next time.